The Amazon today is home to a range of fascinating animals, which include multiple fearsome predators, such as giant fish, felines, and of course, snakes. However, the largest predator in this vast ecosystem is the black caiman, which can exceed 5 meters or 16 feet in length while weighing up to 750 kilograms or 1,650 pounds. This size has allowed it to become an apex predator that easily dominates nearly all else in its ecosystem. And interestingly enough, this reality was still the case millions of years ago. Only, it was much more terrifying back then. Because at the time, the Amazon was home to Lake Bebas, a mega wetland that existed during the Miocene Epoch. Throughout its existence, it gave rise to some absolute giants, with the largest and most terrifying being the Parasaurus which is not only the biggest caiman the world has ever seen, but it is also one of the few animals that packed a bite stronger than that of the largest terrestrial predator to ever live, the T-Rex. Despite possessing such remarkable traits, the Purasaurus is not a reference to its bite or size, rather a nod to the Purus River where this beast was first discovered all the way back in 1892 when skull material was unearthed by paleontologists. It was quickly apparent that the skull belonged to a giant predator, the likes of which has rarely been seen since the Mesozoic. The paleontologists were also able to deduce that the Purasaurus belonged to the Cayman subfamily, one of the two main lineages of the Alligatoridae family, with the other being alligators. As a Cayman, the Purasaurus differed from alligators in multiple ways, some of which included a lack of a bony septum between the nostrils, ventral armor composed of overlapping bony scutes, and longer teeth that were also sharper. This gave paleontologists a rough idea of what this animal looked like in life, however, beyond its classification, not much else was known, as only the skull was recovered. And unfortunately since then, new discoveries have also only consisted of skulls. This has led to some issues when estimating its full body length and weight, however based upon the sheer size of its skull, which could reach 4.8 feet or 1.5 meters in length, paleontologists are certain that it was one of the largest crocodilians ever, and by far the largest caiman. As of now, researchers estimate that the adult Parasaurus ranged anywhere from 34 to 41 feet or 10.4 to 12.5 meters from head to tail, while weighing between 5 and 8.4 tons with some studies actually putting it above these numbers. At this length and weight, only the Sarcosuchus and Dinosuchus rivaled the Purasaurus in size. Yet, until more material is found, it's hard to actually say how these three really compared against each other. Though, even if the Purasaurus turns out to be slightly smaller than these two, it was still by far the largest predator in its environment, and also the largest crocodilian to exist during the Cenozoic, which is quite the achievement. Its immense size would have offered it a wide range of benefits, such as allowing it to dominate interspecific competition. Yet, for the Purasaurus, brute size alone was not enough, as it also possessed one of the most powerful bites ever seen. Researchers noticed that the skull of this giant caiman was not just long, but also extremely dense and robust, giving it an almost box-like appearance. The skull and subsequent jaw structure implied that the Purasaurus could chomp down with immense force and according to one study, the force even exceeded that of a T-Rex. The study itself was done by using regression equations based on modern crocodilians, and the results found that an adult could bite prey with 69,000 newtons, or 7 tons of force, making it stronger than the bite found in the T-Rex as based upon the data of most studies. Additionally, they found the skull of the Purasaurus was not only able to deliver these forces, but was also built to withstand these forces. In other words, it was designed to bite extremely hard time and time again while not breaking down under its own power. This suggests that the Purasaurus would have killed prey by crushing them to bits while potentially also employing a death roll as seen in modern crocodiles. It is also believed to have primarily been an ambush predator as many of its sensory organs were located on the top of its head. Along with the strong bite, the Purasaurus was made even deadlier by its array of teeth which interestingly enough differed among the three known different species of the Purasaurus, those being the Mirandi, Nevensis, and Brasiliensis, with the latter being the largest. Despite some differences in the dentition, there were universal similarities, including the length of the teeth which was about 50 millimeters or 2 inches long. Additionally, all Purasaurus's teeth were curved slightly backwards and had ridges along the edges, resembling those found in Xiphodonts. 
Researchers agree that its teeth were mainly designed to puncture and hold prey while it was crushing them with its immense bite. And with its power, size, dentition, and tactics, the Parasaurus would have been capable of taking down a large variety of prey. Which paleontologists think consisted of giant birds, catfish, buffalo-sized rodents, ground sloths, turtles the size of cars, and one-ton notungulates. It truly was the king of the prehistoric Amazon thanks to its features. However, it appears that its size was also somewhat of a burden, forcing it to consume a large amount of food each day to sustain it around 40 kilograms or 88 pounds of meat to be specific, which is 20 times the requirement for the modern American alligator. Another area where its size was a drawback was in relation to its speed, specifically on land. The Parasaurus was probably a slow walker due to its weight and its slowness would have made prey extremely hard to catch while out of the water. However, in the water where it was most at home, the Parasaurus was actually quite fast thanks to its likely giant tail with preliminary studies suggesting that it may have been able to reach 16 miles per hour or 26 kilometers per hour at top speed. This would have made it tough for any land-dwelling creature to get away from its clutches if crossing a river or when standing too close to the water's edge. This impressive speed, coupled with the rest of the Parasaurus's tool, made it the undisputed freshwater king of the Miocene and an untouchable predator within its habitat. Even juvenile Parasaurus were formidable being able to grow 13 feet or 4 meters in length, and as these caimans were equipped with epidermal body armor, they had very little to fear, with perhaps grown adults being the only real worry. The Parasaurus ruled the mega wetlands it roamed for millions of years, going unchallenged from the Friasian to the Huayquarian stages of the Miocene. Its efficient build also allowed it to spread far and wide, with remains being located in Brazil, Peru, Colombia, and Venezuela. With a long reign and an expansive range, the Parasaurus lived alongside and terrorized many walks of life, which, in addition to the previously mentioned prey, included the Dicligurus, Eumops, Lophostoma, Noctilio, Thylamus, Myocurius, Ducicinus, Lycopsis, Lagonimico, Mycodon, Neosamiri, Patazola, Styrtonia, Granostrapotherium, Xenostrapotherium, Megadolidus, Mesolicophrium, Neodolidus, Theocidon, Cochileus, Myococheleus, Toxodontidae, Dolicotinae, Potamosiren, Hapolops, Boreostema, Galbula, Aramis, Langstonia, Cebicus, Gryposuchus, Stupendimus, and Rhinella. Additionally, snakes, lizards, fish, and crabs were also present. This habitat was absolutely dominated by carnivorous reptiles, while mammalian predators on the other hand were lacking. Yet, despite the numerous reptilian predators, none came close to the size of the Parasaurus, and none dared to challenge it, preferring to hunt smaller prey as opposed to the giant animals the Parasaurus specialized in. It should also be noted that the given list is just a small portion of the animals that lived alongside this mighty king and some even believe that it came into contact with animals outside of its habitat, with one particular animal being perhaps the most famous predator of the Miocene, the Megalodon. This idea stems from the belief that the Parasaurus could have inhabited estuaries, aka an area where a river meets the ocean. This may have brought the giant caiman into contact with the giant shark, and individuals in these areas may have even scavenged upon Megalodon carcasses that were washed ashore with their size granting them the first pickings. The stature of this prehistoric caiman was truly its trump card, along with its bite. And yet, ironically, it appears that its size was also the final nail in the coffin for the Parasaurus. The leading hypothesis behind its extinction is that their downfall was actually caused by the Andes Mountains. When the Parasaurus was still living, the Andes Mountains were still rising, which meant ever-shifting drainage patterns in the Amazon area. Eventually, these continuous changes ultimately resulted in the demise of the Pebas, and unfortunately, since the Parasaurus had such a large body, it would have had an extremely hard time adapting to such large changes in its ecosystem, eventually leading it to being eradicated and replaced by smaller predators.